Well, novelty theory is something I've been working on since the early 70s, uh, inspired by psychedelic plant experiences in the Amazon to attempt to look at time and really deconstruct it and attempt to understand what it is. And this has been a wild intellectual ride uh, leading to some pretty easily stated conclusions. Uh, one is that novelty, which is my term for complexity or advanced organization, novelty increases as we approach the present moment. The universe you and I are living in is a far more novel and complicated place than the early universe was. Well, some people would say, well, that's just a consequence of the unfolding of developmental processes. But this asks the question, what are developmental processes? Why should the universe have a preference for order over disorder? Especially when we have something called the second law of thermodynamics, which tells us exactly the opposite. Physicists believe the universe is running down ultimately into a state of disorder. But what I see is everywhere the emergence of more and more complex forms, languages, organisms, technologies, always building on the previously achieved levels of complexity. So that was one of my insights. Coming out of that insight was the further understanding that this process of complexification through time is not proceeding at a steady rate. It actually follows a kind of asymptotic curve. In other words, it's happening faster and faster. And this was a revelation to me because it allowed me philosophically to contextualize the human world and to understand that human technologies, languages, migrations, art movements, ideologies are not something different from nature. They're the same uh, download of process that we see in the movement of continents, the evolution of new species of animals, except that these human novel emergent situations are happening much more quickly. So I see the cosmos, if you will, as a kind of novelty producing engine, a kind of machine which produces complexity in all realms, physical, chemical, social, whatever, and then uses that achieved level of complexity as the platform for further complexity. Well, this explains our present circumstance. It explains the rush toward all forms of new technology and social organization in the new millennium. But you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that if the universe is complexifying faster and faster, a, a epoch, a time, will come when this rate of complexification is occurring so rapidly that it will become itself the overwhelming phenomena in the world of three-dimensional space and time. And I call this the omega point or the transcendental object at the end of history. And I believe it is not that far off that with the emergence of a global internet, a human population of several billions, an electronic noosphere, uh, that we are now within the shadow of this transcendental object at the end of time. Our religions sense it. That's what gives them their apocalyptic intuitions. And I think the ordinary man and woman in the street sense a kind of built-in acceleration to time itself. Well, rather than dismissing that or treating it as a psychological perception or something unique to our society, I took it as a basic perception about physics and uh, have built elaborate, mathematically defined theories around this idea, and then have found, to my astonishment, incredible congruences with uh, other work. I'm thinking of the Mayan calendar and its uh, curious countdown-like quality toward an extremely unique event that 
the Maya felt would occur in the same time frame that my own equations predicted, even though at the time I was unaware of the Maya. So what we have here is a, a new model of time based on a very real intuition that I think most people share, which is that time is speeding up, that human beings are part of that process, and that the culmination of that process is now within the the van of historical time. In other words, I, I believe it will happen in 2012, in December, coincident with the same events that the Maya placed at the end of their calendar. Even if I'm wrong, even if it's a hundred years or five hundred years later, these are still spans of time that when compared to the life of the planet are, are fractions of a percentage. So whether you believe as I do that we can know the precise moment of this transformation of the world of time or whether you believe it is simply coming soon and fast really doesn't make that much difference. We are all gathered here at the end game of developmental processes on this planet. We are about to become unrecognizable to ourselves as a species. Uh, our technologies, our religions, uh, our science has pushed us toward this for thousands of years without us awakening to what the denouement would be. Now we stand close enough to it that I think all but the most lumpen among us must feel the tug of the transcendental and the transformative. I am very perplexed when you say that time is speeding up. As far as I can tell, um, such things as crystal oscillators, things which keep time, um, clocks, uh, the, the relationship of uh, the earth turning to the calendar, the full moon, all of the things which um, are symptoms of our passage through time don't seem to be throwing themselves out of kilter. So how, how, how what can you, can you, do you really mean about time speeding up? Well, let me answer in the form of a question. Which lasts longer, a million years in which nothing happens or 10 seconds with 50,000 events crammed into it? In other words, uh, uh, really time is only experienced by the events which occur within it. And I maintain that the early universe had very little going on and consequently uh, time moved very, very slowly. Uh, the character of time as we approach the present is that there are more and more uh, what physical domains and energetic domains in which change can occur. For example, the early universe was a pure plasma, a pure swarm of unassociated electrons. You didn't even have atomic systems, let alone chemistry, molecular chemistry, life, complex speciated life, and uh, dynamically balanced planetary ecosystems. Each one of those more complex phenomena crystallized out or emerged, if you will, from the previous uh, uh, systems that had come into existence. So when I say time is speeding up, what I mean really is that more and more is happening more and more is happening. And if you ask the question, well, what would be the ultimate state of connectivity or of happening? It's when all points are connected to all other points. Somehow this concept of connectivity is intimately linked to the concept of complexity. And so really what I'm saying is that the universe is getting its act together. It's connecting the dots. It's bringing everything into co-relationship with everything else. And somehow it does this through the production of consciousness. Consciousness is this integrative function in biology which takes data 
which may appear profoundly unrelated and in fact brings it into some kind of a congruent relationship. We say an organism coordinates a point of view. Well, in a way, what's happening over time is that the universe is coordinating a point of view. And as it does this, it becomes somehow more aware, more self-conscious, more uh, being-like and less thing-like. And as I said, this process is not proceeding at a steady pace. It's proceeding faster and faster. More connectivity occurs now in a calendar year than occurred in a million years, a billion years ago. So sometime, somehow, as we approach the present, we find ourselves in an ever denser realm of activity, interrelationship, connectivity, and the result of this is more of the same, producing a shrinking globe, ever more immersive technologies, a dissolution of political, social, gender, and class boundaries of all sorts. So that's what I mean when I say the universe is speeding up. You know, before the advent of, of man, of human beings, the fastest changes on this planet of any consequence were genetic changes, changes in the genomes of plants and animals. Well, biologists know that for a fruit fly to add a spur to its leg, for a bird to change its plumage, you need hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of years of evolutionary time. With the advent of human beings using spoken language, a, a new kind of possibility was born. It's called epigenetic change. In other words, change which is not about genes, but which is about uh, languages, customs, behaviors of human beings. Epigenetic change reaches its uh, dramatic culmination in speech, writing, uh, and communication of all sorts. And so the carriers of epigenetic change, the human beings, are automatically then the carriers of accelerated novelty. And so when you look at, let's say, evolution on a coral reef, and you compare it, let's say, to the evolution of political ideas in modern Europe, obviously modern Europe's rate of change in this domain is thousands of times faster. So by moving from the genetic to the epigenetic realm, we have vastly accelerated all kinds of processes. Now we appear to be about to move from the strictly human domain to the human machine symbiosis domain and of course machines process information make connections and do their work at a rate thousands of times faster than any human being can work so we see again a progressive acceleration of the process of creating and maintaining varieties of connectivity and that's what I mean by time is speeding up.